Okay, well, I'm here with Emmanuel from Bubble. Thanks a lot for uh, joining me today. Hey, it's good to be here. It'd be great to just hear sort of the quick version of what Bubble is. Sure. So we're probably one of the first one or two no-code tools. Uh, at that time when we started, it was not called no-code. No it was uh, didn't even have a name. Most people thought what we we're doing was not necessary because it was, you know, everybody's going to learn how to code. And we decided that uh, we felt that that would not work, honestly, because learning how to code is tedious and not for everyone. And instead, we built this platform to let people build things without code. Where, where I'm going to be a little bit more specific is what things we're talking about, because today's a no-code space is extremely wide. And I actually don't think we have many competitors in the sense that each player tends to be very strong at one thing. So what we're focusing on is really building fully functional, uh, fully customizable web applications, which means uh, trying to build something like you know, Twitter, Airbnb, a CRM for your business, an invoicing tool, building that for the web. So as a web application, uh, can be built on Bubble without code. Uh, obviously, there are some limitations with what you do on Bubble. Like, you're not going to write a machine learning algorithm. But in real life, you don't do that very often. Like, and uh, what's fundamental to our vision is that engineers are still part of the feature, actually. We don't think that you know, engineers are going to disappear. But they will focus on building these algorithms, for instance. And uh, you, as a no-coder, but a business person, you would build the product you need for yourself or for your customers visually. How did you like, explain what Bubble was? before this sort of no code phrasing came around then how was what was it what was like the tagline you know what, you, you, you know what? exactly the same uh, the <laughs> tagline was um it's actually still what it is on our website um so the field we were calling ourselves in was visual programming and not no code and the tagline we had you don't need to be a coder to build software so it's pretty much what no code is today you know um, it was much harder to be fair. Like it was harder to explain that in 2013 or 2014 because, while well, the product was not as good, and really we had to fight against you know pretty much everyone that was saying that it's so cool to learn how to code. I mean, if you remember in 2013 or 2014, Barack Obama was you know writing a line of code with code.org and they had like a code.org app and writing some lines of JavaScript and it was so great, right? And it took a few years for people to realize it doesn't work that way. Um, and so now it's much easier for us to get there. So what happens is that I think uh, the old products, and in particular our product, got better. Um, people realize that learning how to code is hard and not necessarily necessary as a product got better. And so those two things coming together make uh, of no code and bubble what it is today. Yeah, so you, do you think it's sort of the landscape of the, the, of the tooling and a combination of that with people basically finding learning to code quite difficult that then sort of has brought people to okay, I'm not actually going to learn to code. I'm going to learn to build, but on an abstraction of, of that. Exactly. Yeah, because people started realizing that it's, uh, it's tedious, you know, and it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. I mean, I, I code not as much today as I used to, but, you know, I code hundreds of thousands of lines for this bubble thing. And so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you've got your uh, fair share of practice. Yeah, I mean, I tried to learn to code plenty of times, and I think the way you learn is still the same. So I try to build something, I get to a point, I get stuck, I've got to go back, I've got to test it, I've got to like troubleshoot it, I've got to figure out why this thing didn't work, what did this user do that made it like break? And you've still got to go through the same motions of like the learning is still the same. It's just what you're learning to do is not colons and, and functions, it's more like a visual, like you said, a visual programming layer, which Help yeah, me. I mean, because, right, because the main value of, visual thing, of a higher abstraction and visual things is the so concepts you're going to be manipulating are closer to your needs. So, you know, if you're on Bubble or on any other tool, you know, you're going to draw a button on the play, on this page. And that's a concept that you're pretty familiar with as a user. If you actually write that in code, you're going to have a div on the DOM and we start getting into things that are really not representative of real life. And then the thing, and thing is the speed of iteration with higher abstraction that is much faster. And so it makes learning more fun. Um, one of the big challenges, you know, if you have to build like a full application with code is that it's going to take you, you know, a few days of just writing things before you, you can even test it. Uh, with something like Bubble, you can test it literally within like 20 minutes or something and start seeing your progress and also the little thing you should be fixing. Yeah, I think that's a huge, huge part of the visual layer of programming where you see the quick wins and the feedback loop is, oh, that button did work. Like there is a button now and it does do this thing that I wanted it to do. So I think that definitely helps. Do you think that people 
who start building with no code tools maybe that's like is, do you think that's like a almost a good starting point to then start learning how to code it certainly is a better way to teach programming coding yes i in fact it's something we've done with a few high schools in the us um I'm also trying to do that in my native France because you know, I'm French and why not? <laughs> to get you know people in high schools uh, to learn computing thinking to bubble first, because it teaches you a lot. Of, the, the fact the fact of the matter is back to how we're different a little bit from the other tools is you can go wrong on bubble, you can do bugs, you know, you can like mess up your logic uh, and not get to the right thing, which is not necessarily true on other tools. And because you can do that, there is a learning opportunity. You need to think programmatically of what you want your application to do. You need to think of, you know, what if the user is logged in? What if the user is logged out? What should happen then? What should happen in that case? And so this is a very good way to start thinking about designing applications and building software. And then I think at that point, there should be a natural selection between two kinds of people. People that are happy with what they can build on a tool like Bubble, and people that want to go low level because they want to write these machine learning algorithms, for instance, and then they go into code. I think it's, it's pers personally, I think it's actually pretty dangerous to put kids too young on code because it's not for everyone. And there is actually a risk of um, pro you know, propagating the message that if they don't know how to code, they won't be able to do things in life uh, professionally, yeah. uh, which is just not true. I think it's, it's like learning languages where maybe some of the basics or even like you said, the computer thinking should be taught at a school level to sort of think, okay, this is what like a front end section looks like. This is what sort of databases are like and the function of those and how you connect them, but not necessarily okay, write these outputs, write these inputs to get an output of hello world. And if you don't, then it's just like fail, 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 fail. It's like one of those bad feedback yeah. loops, right? Exactly. So how do you teach people about how bubble works? Because in my experience, it seems like the more, it's like the, it's closer to the code level, I think, than a lot of the tools are, especially today, where they're very building block or click, draw this thing, and, and then this thing happens. So how do you sort of get over that? I, I guess before I answer your question, the question, the reason why we chose that path, which is non-traditional, because everybody else uh, tried to go for like easier, um, faster learning curve at first. But what we felt is that if we do this, and honestly, this is kind of what I'm seeing with a lot of other tools, you're going to hit a limit at some point of uh, the flexibility you offer to your users. Uh, because it's really hard, you know, when you start with a product that takes a few minutes to learn and telling them, oh, but, but from now on, you're going to have to invest, you know, 10 hours to learn, because at some point, complexity comes with a price of, uh, flexibility comes with a price of learning, which it's not even a price. I think it's actually a good thing, personally. I, I like creating a tool that makes people learn things. That's yeah. something I'm actually pretty comfortable with. But um, we felt like w once you start having a limit, then people graduate from your platform in terms of features. And then it becomes, you know, again, and then you fall into the previous attempts in the no code space, which is now in, is new, but honestly, you know, access and visual basic, uh, not visual, but visual basic had a little bit of code, but you know, front page access in the nineties were some kind of no code tools. And, but the limitation they were having meant that people would go to the code step um, pretty quickly as soon as they had real needs. What we fe felt is that if we create something where you don't have that limitation in terms of feature, we have an opportunity to get people started on us and then stay on Bubble as long as the platform scales nicely. And today, the problems we're having uh, and what we're working on is more feature, more performance and scalability than features, actually. And so how do we teach that? Uh, well, it's a combination of two things. Uh, trying to have, and it's something we don't do as well as um, we could. So we're actually hiring someone to put together like a university, but we have like written documentation and videos, not as good as it should be. The other thing that I th we have done so far, it's actually pretty old. Uh, when people sign up to Bubble, you know, they have like click by click lessons that are actually smart. You know, like if you get lost, it should, brings you back to the right place. This, uh, believe it or not, was built in 2013 and we still are using the same thing. And on, that, on those, we have a completion rate of more than 50%, which means anyone that starts those lessons, half of them finish them. When you know you know the attention span on the internet, it's actually pretty good because yeah. it's about like, you know, seven minutes to finish one lesson. So that has worked pretty well. So that's how we um, try to get people to do the learning. But then there is another thing that we're pushing on a lot on is honestly communication. If people really knew and believed us, uh, and that's where there is a huge evangelization work to be done, that you can do pretty much the same thing as code after 10 or 12 hours of learning, and if people believed it, they would do it. Because, you know, 12 hours is a long time, but it's not that long for so. At the same time, you know, people are willing to pay $10,000 for a three weeks bootcamp. 
through boot camp, you know, to get a job as an engineer. So that's the two things. So it's evangelization and showcasing great successes of us so that people believe that it's real and then better docu existing documentation, which is good for the lessons, not as good for the other things and improving of that. Yeah, I think. One thing I'll say uh, and I've, is the level of skepticism that we have to deal with uh, as a local tool. And it's changing a little bit. And I mean, I appreciate the work that you guys do with Makeupad because it does help a lot. But the skepticism that we have uh, when we say, oh yeah, you can build, you know, to, uh, try to an engineer and tell them, yeah, I mean, someone put on Twitter and on Bubble is gonna say, oh yeah, but you know, I don't believe it. And even if that's true, that doesn't scale. You know, like they will always find reasons for it not to work. Or, uh, or eventually they're like, oh, they're actually destroying jobs. I mean, they will find like a lot of like big negative things to say uh, about what you do because uh, I mean, some of them, I think I'm not really legit, but some of them, are not totally, totally unfair because of the history of the field. Like a lot of people have made that promise in the past and did not deliver on it. Um, and so fighting that is actually more of a communication evangelization problem than an education problem. Yeah, for sure. I think um, there's a bunch of stuff there that we I want to touch on. A lot of people I've seen, they may have been more technically minded um, initially. And I've seen that some people who, once they, like it's that aha moment of once they get bubble, like you're never taking them off bubble they're using bubble for everything they're telling everyone else use bubble for this for, for anything so i've definitely seen that from the no code community inside makepad and around wherever we hang out we all have to battle the code versus no code debates on uh, on twitter and everywhere else there's not one size fits all and we're lucky in that actually quite a few i think it's like 25 percent of the community on makepad is from an engineering background um, which is great and, and by the way that's very new yeah so that's great yeah yeah i think it's um it's i think it's coming around so i think a lot of programmers are thinking well we have to create the same architecture we have to like you said spend a few days creating something before like it's just the basics of okay you gotta set up a rails app gotta do this thing this thing and it's all the same stuff yeah. um and they and they want to do things faster and test things and validate stuff too um yeah, I mean, in some ways, uh, I would say for engineers, but uh, like no code in general and bubble in particular should be their best friend. Yeah. Because they spare them from all the tedious things that non technical people ask them to build. Like, and then they can actually focus on what's fun. You know, like if you're an engineer, like building a new sign up form uh, for users to sign up is honestly like not the most like exciting thing to do as an engineer, right? So they should actually be truly excited that we finally find a way to get non-technical people that bug them all the time to build things away. Yeah, anyway. and I, th yeah, I think even with like, oh yeah, I've got a project and it looks exactly like Airbnb, but it's not, but it is from that side of things. So also, if you're working in a team and you're thinking, oh, can you like, can we build a small tool to help me moderate this community or publish blog posts faster? And the engineers are thinking, well, that's like a few hours of my time that I don't want to do, just put it on the backlog. It'll never be prioritized. Like the whole point of this is to sort of empower those people to just do it themselves. Like they can build their own tool with Zapier and, and connect things up or they can do stuff on Bubble. They can do stuff on any tool to, to go around that. No one wants to waste anyone's time here. Everyone's trying to do like the, the quickest version of what they want to do. Um, yep. So we should, yeah, we should all get along is how we, yeah, we should think about it. Um, so what would you... I mean, people ask me this all the time. What would you rebrand the no-code movement as? Because it's not no-code in any shape or form, is it? So, uh, as I told you, like we started in 2013 by visual programming. In my experience, it, it might not be ideal because programming, for some reasons, people think it's code. In fact, I wrote a blog post on our blog that's still there that says programming is not coding. So, but maybe that's a tough battle to fight against everybody else. So maybe visual development is a good way to phrase things. Um, because it's still about developing something, you know, and it is visual. Yeah, visual programming or visual development, I think, is better than no code. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's... Uh... Having, having said that, having said that, you know, no code is taking off, you know, the media start looking at this new trend, so I'm not going to fight it for now. <laughs> no, I think we'd all have a very tough time trying to fight it. I think we've just got to sit back and sort of accept it. Unfortunately, this is the... Case. And, and, and honestly, enjoy. I mean. um, so what do you also... Around the scalability issue, that's one of the biggest questions everyone says. Usually, it's from a person, if they're asking me, how will this, how will this platform scale? You're more at risk of, sort of being stuck on a platform. How do you 
discuss and sort of explain or go around um, go around that for someone? Um, so first of all, I would give them some examples of the most of the biggest things we had. Uh, the biggest thing we had, you know, there was three hundred million dollars. They sell loans to people, so they raise money from investors that go into like a web application and that goes to homeowners and want, and everything happens online. The process over a billion dollars of loans over four years started on us in 2014. It's still running on bubble today. So it can scale. Now, sometimes it can be, you have scaling pains, uh, you know, and we need to work on that and improve that. And we did a lot of work for them. The beauty of our model is that all the work we've did for that specific client, for instance, benefits everybody else because we build things in, way, in ways that uh, if you optimize, a, you know, one action in a workflow, something to be faster for someone, it's going to be applied to everyone. Um, I'll, I'll say two things and when people start on so I'm going to give them an example to tell them hey you can really get to like something real before uh, you start being in trouble and then the other thing I would tell them is uh, honestly um, our commitment is first and foremost to people that are already on the platform versus new users when they started making something real um, meaning back to this issue we had you know how do we get people to learn bubble uh, and I said use the success cases and evangelization is really important well if i have a company that starts scaling aggressively on us and doing very well i'm not going to let them go because uh, that i really need them to prove that actually bubble works at scale like you know one day if we have a startup that most people have heard of that is built on bubble it's done you know like i don't have any marketing yeah. issue like things will just happen on the automatically right and so i each of these clients that start scaling we actually bet on them and so we what I tell people is that we, if they knew how much time we spend on existing users trying to make things better and faster for them versus like new product features and stuff like this, they'd be surprised. Like it's really our commitment um, morally and our best business interest to build, you know, uh, to make sure that things work well for people that start on us. Yeah. Now, w w will they be scaling pains? Yes, but you know what? Uh, if you have your own engineers as well, that's, you know. Well, exactly. Yes. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, and I also think that people also people panic about the best case scenario that might happen to their like amazing idea that they have without even having something that has ten users or hundred users, and it's always yeah. a and, and it's fine. I mean, like at some point, you know, this enthusiasm and excitation when you start is the drive that gets you to start. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but yes, it's uh, it's definitely something we have to handle. I mean, th there is another thing that we hear often, which is a lot in fear. Like, yeah. hey, I'm, then I'm building on Bubble. It doesn't generate code because it actually does not. How can I migrate off Bubble? Um, right now, I mean, the best answer uh, we have is two things. So if we were to shut down, we open source everything. Like we've said that repeatedly, it's on our website. So if, if people are worried we go out of business, um, then we'll, feed, we'll give them the code so that they can keep running what they have. The second, and the th second thing I say is that if we don't go out of business again, at no point our interest is to find a way to kill their businesses because we, you know, not many businesses have uh, the incentives that align between users and the provider. Like if you think, you know, like a lot of platforms where you try, you, as a business, you don't necessarily want the best, what's best for you is not the best for your clients. For us, it truly is, actually. I mean, at some point, of course, we need to charge something, so we're gonna disagree a little bit on whether it's 29 or $25. But at the end of the day, again, for us to succeed, we need business to do extremely well on us, and so we want the best for our users. We just need to find a way that works economically. But you usually, I mean, people, it's not really a pricing issue. If people start doing well on bubble, like, we're honestly 50 times cheaper than having a team of engineers. So it's really just about, you know, we work on that together to make it work technically. Yeah, exactly. You, you mentioned that one, uh, that one startup that was like, those numbers are huge. Um, and we need more of these success stories or these stories just sort of showing off. What are some of the sort of big, crazy, interesting, weird, small, different types of um, things that you've seen built with Bubble? Um, I mean, it, it goes from like... Uh, an Airbnb for peer dots. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you can read your peer dots. Uh, so it's, I think it's called peershare.com. Yeah. We have um, this guy in Canada. So it's not a startup. So that's interesting. Who basically rebuilt his entire. He worked for an HVAC company, uh, like, you know, AC appliances. Okay. And he built his entire um, business suite on bubbles, so, you know, HR, invoicing, um, ordering stuff 
uh, or, um, ordering um, supplies like uh, materials and stuff like that, uh, pieces. Uh, all of that built on bubble because I was just working better as what you could find uh, on the shelf. We had, um, we have two guys, actually now it's a little bit bigger because they raised a little bit of money uh, in Utah that started like a marketing automation platform for small businesses. Um, and then we have people doing personal projects, you know, like um, it's an example I give often of uh, a guy who built an advent calendar for his girlfriend. Uh, you know, like you have a day behind like each day of December and you get a surprise when you click on it for her iPad so that, you know, she would have a digital one that obviously you couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and it's a question like we get often, you know, like when we were meeting investors last year, they were like, you know, what are the main use cases uh, of Bubble? And the truth is, I mean, it's all over the place because that's how it's built. I mean, that's kind of the point. That seems to be the nature of the no-code space. Is everyone's quite curious and everyone likes to almost push things further than you maybe were originally planning to push, like to have them. But then equally, it's still like it's a platform with all these different types of tools that allow you to do a mix match. I mean, these things. It, it's actually the most... Um, fun things uh, that I have uh, on my job is when I see people building things that I thought technically were not possible, just by combining pieces like elements or actions in a weird way. And I, yeah. and I see them doing behaviors that I didn't think were possible. It's actually the most cool thing ever. Yeah, and I think that's, that seems to be like a theme of people who are running platforms. They see things that they didn't know were possible with the platform that they built, which is like a crazy thing, but it's awesome to see that People are pushing. I mean, it, 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 it comes with a lot of problems, so it's really cool. But so the, the reason why performance uh, is something we need to work on is we're so open-ended. Like Bubble is actually pretty fast if you have clean design and you know are reasonable with the number of elements uh, you put on the page and stuff like that. But the problem is it, because it's very open-ended, people do crazy shit. And you know, <laughs> we've seen pages with you know a thousand different fields on the type. You know, like a type of data, and they had a thousand fields. Like this is actually costly because at some point downloading all those things is expensive and processing these things just takes time. And so we're in the business of optimizing things regardless because we don't want, I mean, we have a few tools to tell you here, you're doing something inefficient here, but at some point we want to create something that just works. Uh, but that's where the challenge is. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah, I've seen so many awesome stories. So what is, what's next for Bubble? What are the the key things like that are on the roadmap? Anything you can... Give us some insight um, um, so on the product side uh, really like finally tackling performance seriously i'm hoping we can start seeing visible impact this quarter and early next quarter we have a full redesign coming in uh, for the editor which is not going to change the ux that yet i mean that's something we do in two steps but at least to get something that is more like at par with good design standards in fact i design what you can see today which it's, it's okay <laughs> it's like amazing um and we have a probably like um we have a better integration with Airtable because that's something that keeps coming back a lot. Uh, so pushing on the, like the ability to upload like very large files because we have people that wanted to upload like gigabyte files and something we don't support yet. So we have all those things to increase how user uh, useful the platform is for some specific use cases and uh, a new design, uh, better performance for people that start scaling and a new design to make the platform easier to learn. Because I think at some point, uh, design matters a little bit to not scare people. Uh, from a business perspective, um, like uh, we're really starting to tackle growth, which we've never done so far. I mean, before that, a little bit because of our bootstrapping history, I was doing that like kind of on an opportunistic uh, fashion. Like if something comes to us, I would grab it and you know that's how we got some press or some um, or some uh, exposure to users. But now we want to start turning this into like a growth machine. So we're experimenting everything from uh, you know paid, paid marketing, which we've never done. So we started this month. Uh, a lot of things to increase the reach. Um, like a, a startup program to start, you know, having like relationship with pretty much every incubators or school that has an entrepreneurship hub because that's really where Bubble should be seen. Uh, we're working on better ways to engage with our better users, especially startups, because that's really the core of our user base, um, to, to increase like evangelization. Those are the two angles. Right now we have 22 people. Um, I guess that will end the year around 30 or something. I, I believe in keeping the team small though, because we're in a world where you can automate a lot of things. And so the yeah. bigger the team, sometimes the bigger the other hand. Like have you built internal tools with Bubble? Do you, do you use a lot of no code automations um, yourself as a team? I mean, all our PM, the product management tools is built on, is built on Bubble. Our website itself, um, 
and not just the website, but the, in fact, uh, a lot of, you know, account management, our marketplace, uh, all of that is built on Bubble, actually. So that, that actually is a way for us to iterate very quickly. So another thing we're working on is a better copy for our website, like, because I think we're understanding ourselves a little bit on the website. Um, and so that's going to be implemented pretty quickly because it's all built on Bubble. Yeah. Um, we don't, we, we actually don't use that here. Uh, we use segments, which in some ways could be seen as a no-code tool, uh, because you can do a lot of things with it without writing code. Um, but yeah, no, no, we, we use a lot of tool. In fact, uh, part of the onboarding, when people start at the company, even engineers, uh, you have to do two things uh, that are, I think, pretty different from other people. You have to be two weeks on success rotation, so answering emails from users, which is pretty intense, but the, and very efficient way to learn the product because people email you like there are crazy situations they create in the app and they're like, hey, I'm confused now and you have to deconfuse them. And then we actually have um, a bubble test. So for about a week, we have written a very extensive test to force people to explore, not all because that would be complicated, but probably 90% of the features we have. Um, so because we want to maintain a very strong knowledge uh, of the product, especially among engineers, because at some point that's kind of the challenge you have is that engineers are not our core market. And so they don't use it as much as other people on the team. So how do you, with that, like that bubble test, have you ever thought of making that public? Uh, do any of your marketplace experts have to go through any testing like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we definitely thought about that. Um, just not to, I need to figure out the right way. Like, you know, the internet is an interesting place. As soon as you put something out there, then people will have, you know, a little, answers somewhere like yeah. so you, you 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 need to think a little bit carefully i'd love to spend some time hopefully this year in like making our freelancer and agency community a little bit stronger and so that means you know probably letting people rate them but also like having some kind of certification um but i want to do that carefully as soon as you start giving like a bubble certified badge to someone it's very hard to take it back even if they don't do well you know so you have to think you have to do that carefully yeah that's definitely um one of those tread on eggshells. One thing I was, I mean, having said that, I really like our current, like, you know, um, freelancer slash agency community because most of these guys or girls, like women, did not come uh, from an agency background and they literally created businesses on top of us. Like, w without Bubble, they would not, they would be making a living in a different way. Um, so I really want to find a way to help them more. I think right now, because of our forums, the community is very concentrated on one place, so they find a lot of customers that way. Um, but I'm hoping at some point we can put more energy to help them grow bigger. Yeah, I so think some of them, so some of them, I think, make a better living than I do. I think it's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. I think um, a friend. Of, I mean, I, me, and a friend a few years ago started doing like no code development and design for people, and he was the develop developer in our team um and everything was built on bubble so and now he continues to run an agency built on bubble building Who is this? it's called the upstarters oh yeah yeah i know yeah yeah i, I know the name i mean i, I see them in our analytics yeah yeah so uh yeah he's um yeah he's now got an agency doing doing that stuff built on bubble which is awesome um yeah it does seem that people have really flocked towards like freelancer agency style of well, yeah, because what, what, what's happening is, uh, again, the benefit of no code is that once you know how to use these tools, you can build things probably 10 times faster than writing code. So at the end of the day, the customer doesn't really care as long as it works. So uh, you can basically sell them something 10 times faster. It's going to be easier to iterate and probably charge them, you know, five times cheaper, which means you're making a pretty good living compared to the existing solutions with code, you know. Yeah, for sure. So how you said you haven't really looked at growth or like you haven't really thought about growth or making a growth engine rather what has what's been what's made it successful for bubble then because everyone seems do you think it is like the the product buying of people once they're on they're on and they love the product so much that they just really yeah i think I, I think so when i say we haven't done any growth effort over the last eight years of the company we did one thing that eventually i think works well if you do it well is building a product that people love like product addiction is something very strong. So because you do this, then people become kind of obsessed. Uh, and sometimes it can be tough. I mean, we get emails that can be very emotional when we have a bug from, uh, from 
people. Like, the level of a passion goes both ways. Uh, but so they have that. Then you create a community uh, where people can start exchanging with each other. Uh, and that's our forum. And that has turned out to be our biggest growth engine so far. The reason being um, having a forum has two major advantages. So first one is um, three advantages. The first one is that it shows that um, the platform is alive because sometimes you don't know, you know, so people show, show up on the forum and say, and they can see how many posts they have. So the second thing is it actually makes onboarding much faster for us and much easier for us because we actually, it's not very costly for us to onboard users because most of the time this is done through the community. So, um, we, we start getting emails from people when they start having real issues that require us to look at their application. But a lot of the work uh, of you know, learning how to use the platform is actually done through the forum, and people are okay with that. And so we've outsourced a lot of the work to our users uh, in that way. And then the third thing, which I, I did not expect at all, because I, I'm not an SEO person, but I discovered that uh, very happily, is that when you have a forum that generates a lot of posts, uh, it's very well indexed on Google. And so, and all the keywords are basically defined by our users. So we have a very wide coverage of keywords. Uh, and that's how usually when people look for local platforms, we're pretty high uh, on the list on Google. So that's how we've been finding people. Awesome. Is, is a forum built on Bubble or is it? No, it's, it's, a, it's kind of bad. It should have been. It's on a discourse. Discourse, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, I mean, when, when I started it, it was in June 2015. So it was just Josh and I. So I took like half a day to make it look a little bit like bubble and I used what was on the market. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm not, I was an accused mate. I just, uh, it's, just wondering. No, I mean, it's embar- no, I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean, it would be better if we had that, but you know, that's what it is. <laughs> um, okay, well, I've, yeah, I've loved having you on this. So one question I'd like to finish with is if bubble already existed today and you had no part of it, it was nothing to do with you, what would you be building? Also, if I was doing something completely different? Well, maybe, yeah, maybe um, that and then no code related to. So actually, you know what, if I, if I wouldn't, I really want this thing to exist and exist at scale. And so it's hard for me to think about something else that I would want to do in technology if it's not bubble. Um, and so if I were not doing what I'm doing today, for some reasons, you know, the product goes well or not or something and I'm out, or if I hadn't met Josh, I would probably be something working, it's gonna sound very French, uh, in the public sector in France, I think, um, in the education space, because that's something I really care about, which actually is related to bubble and no code, I think. Uh, another way to define what we do is, you know, we're educate, empowering people by educating them to do something. And, um, and something, I mean, I, I was a high school teacher full-time for a year uh, in my early 20s. That's actually mm-hmm. something that I care a lot about. So I would be in some kind of, I don't know at which position, but that would be yeah, something in the public sector trying to work on the education space. Either public sector or um, some kind of nonprofits, I don't know. But probably not technology. It's hard because something like Bubble is so fundamental. Like r- right now, no code is a thing, but if we do our job properly and if we scale very well, no code will not be a thing anymore. You know, it's just a new way to build things. And uh, whether it's code or no code, doesn't matter. Um, I mean, you would still use code for the things that Bubble can do, but that would be only like, you know, 5% of the time. And so if we do this, uh, we have an opportunity to massively change how technology works. And that's basically changing everything, uh, changing how people work, you know, and everything. So it's hard for me to think about other tech ideas I could work on that would be as impactful if done right. So now my job is to make it well. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's a great answer. Right? Yeah, I agree with you that hopefully soon it won't be thinking building something with code or without code. It's just, yeah, the other way to build stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, I really hope, I really hope five years from now, we don't talk about no code anymore. Yeah. And it's just, this is how you build. Just a, just a way to build things. Yeah, of course. Um, well, yeah, thanks so much for your time. It's been, uh, it's been awesome. And I uh, really appreciate it. That was fun. Thank you very much. <laughs>